Now, I am really excited today because one of my favorite plugin manufacturers, Audio Modern, have just released a brand new plugin. And actually, I've had a bit of a hand in testing this one. So I have been using this one for a little while and it's really worked its way into my workflow. In fact, it's almost essential for me. It's in my Ableton template. I start up every single session with it because I find it so damn useful. It's a MIDI generator plugin, another one that kind of creates chords from just a single MIDI note press so you hold down one note on your keyboard and it will play a chord so I actually have chord jam set up on a MIDI channel within my template it literally just sits there it doesn't produce any sound itself you kind of almost pipe it into something else it kind of generates MIDI for another channel so I've actually got a keyboard channel here these are my keys I'm using the electric device uh, into the Tal chorus just gives me that kind of nice washed out kind of sound And all you need to do is really just change the input on that channel. So where it says all ins, I'm gonna choose chord jam and then from the second drop down chord jam and select in. Now I'm gonna arm the chord jam channel. And now whenever I hit a key on the MIDI keyboard, Now I'm not gonna go through every single feature in this video because actually I had a part in creating the tutorial videos for this, which I'm gonna to link to up there. They're on the Audio Modern YouTube channel. So I wanna dive into some of my favorite features of this plugin and how I use it. So say for example, I am starting a brand new track. I've got this vocal sample here and some drums. Now I've got the vocal, the vocal is in F minor. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up Chord Jam. I really love the interface for this. All the audio modern plugins have got a really distinctive, nice look to them. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna change the key of it. As I, as I said before, the vocal is in F minor. So at the top here, I'm gonna choose F minor within here, well actually F, and then the scale type is already set to minor, but there's all the other different scale types in there. Now I'm gonna choose the chord type. And in fact, I'm probably gonna go for the minor ninth because that has a nice kind of soulful kind of feel to it. It's what I usually use. And then I'm just gonna use the keyboard to play chords. So whatever key I press on the keyboard will play a chord within that scale. In fact, I can move the octave down as well. Put it down one octave. So it's already sounding quite nice. We're playing those minor ninths, but there's a whole load of things in here that you can tweak to really make it sound kind of cool. So there's the voices here. This controls all of the different notes that are being pressed. So within the minor ninth chord, there's five keys being pressed and I can actually control the voicing for each one of those. So I could knock one of them down a semitone, for example. Gives us that lovely kind of bass note. And I'm actually gonna knock one of these up uh, 12 semitones as well. Sounds so, so luscious. So yeah, I can really kind of start jamming along just by playing this and kind of seeing what kind of chords I can use. There's just so many different combinations you can use. And there's loads of other little features in here that I really love. For example, the velocity and the time section here. This can be some really interesting stuff. So the velocity, for example, here, we can actually change the velocity of each one of those keys. And this can make it sound a little bit more interesting, a little bit more human, because if the velocity is different for every different key that's pressed, it's gonna sound well, a little bit more human anyway. So you can go through here and you can adjust each one of these manually within here. So it's really as simple as just doing those sliders, but there's actually this kind of randomization control. And that's the same thing across all the audio modern plugins. They're really good for like the randomization and kind of happy accidents. And there's this little infinity control here. Basically what this does, if I activate it, every time I press a key, those velocities will automatically 
randomize, which kind of creates a really interesting humanized kind of feature. Now to actually reduce the amount that this is actually affected. So we don't want it to be like the lowest velocity and the highest velocity. We want a kind of a more narrow kind of range. And I can actually adjust that range here. So this is the lowest velocity it's going to randomize to. And then we've got the highest velocity. So if I just kind of put those two points there, it will randomize in between those two points. It's so cool. So every time you hit a key, you've got that kind of you've got that that chord, but it's slightly different each time you press it really kind of adds that realism to it. And you can do the same thing with time as well. So we have like an offset for every single note here. So I create like a strum kind of effect almost. Let's increase it a little bit more so you can kind of hear that make it a little bit more obvious. And also I can use the infinity control there to actually kind of switch that up a little bit. And you could actually just kind of decrease this range here to be as sloppy or as tight as you want it to be. So obviously the smaller range there, the tighter it's going to play. I really, really love that. But yeah, you can create some really nice, interesting strumming effects. And I kind of like that for these kind of longer kind of held notes. They work really well. Let's just adjust this a little bit. You're creating that wonderful effect just by hitting one key, just by pressing one key on your MIDI keyboard, you can go between those lovely chords. It's just so cool to kind of play around with it, almost experiment with those different chords. And just by playing different notes on your committee keyboard, you're coming up with different chords within that scale. It's kind of nice to jam along to it because, for example, when I'm starting a remix, I'll know what key that I want to be in and I can just load this in, put the right key on chord jam and then just start playing around with different chord combinations, progressions and seeing what I can come up with. Now, there's two different ways you can kind of get those chords out of chord jam to start using. The first way, which I usually find the easiest for me, it's just my kind of workflow, is to just arm the keys channel for record. So I've got it actually armed on the keys channel and the chord jam channel. I'm just going to record whatever I kind of play out of there. So I'll turn the input to off so I can then start using this MIDI clip. I'm going to consolidate that and then I'll just go ahead and start tightening up all these keys, just quantizing them. So that's definitely the manual way of doing it. The other way of doing it is actually use the inbuilt sequencer within Chord Jam. So if I go back into Chord Jam again, and in fact, let me just arm that keys channel back to in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the sequencer on within here. And this is where you can start sequencing those chords that you've just done. Now, the first thing I need to do is adjust the amount of steps because the chord sequence that I've got in mind is actually longer than the one that we've got currently. So it's 32 steps at the moment. I'm going to increase this up to 64. I'm also going to drag out the range so it plays the whole thing. Next up, let's get some chords in there. So you do this by simply just hitting the key on the keyboard for the chord that you want. So for example, let's choose this one. So that one is now selected and I just click on the grid here, the sequencer, uh, and that creates a little green dot. And then I can drag that out for as long as I want that chord to play for. So let's go for maybe here. I think that's as long as I want it to go for. Now there's two different tracks here. We have the human track and the robot track. The robot track is a whole randomized kind of feature, which allows you to use a whole load of different progressions and different grooves. Uh, but I actually like using the human one because I like planning it out myself. So that's our first chord within there. Let's get the next one in there. So I'm going to select that by again, just hitting the key on my keyboard and then drag that out. And then the third chord and then the fourth. 
And of course you can go in there and edit these however you want to, so you can drag them out. And if you want to change it, you can click on whatever chord you want and then press a different key on your keyboard to change that out. <laughs> Timing's not quite there with that one. So I'm just gonna drag this over here, maybe just let it come in a little bit earlier. And in fact, I'll drag that one out as well. So now that I've got that progression in there, what I can do is now use this drag sequence here. I can actually just click on this, drag it straight out of the plugin and straight into my door. And that generates that same MIDI information that we had when we recorded it in. And again, I'm just gonna select off on here and we can hear this played back actually from the MIDI clip within here. And those really are just some of the features within this plugin. I've been using this for a little while. I've been testing it out for a little while. And honestly, it has become such a big part of my writing process. When I come to write a new track or do a remix, this is something I usually turn to very, very quickly. It's just easy for me to kind of generate those chords that I need to for the track. Now, I'm not saying this is any better than any of the other plugins. I've got Scalar within my Ableton project, and I will sometimes start with that instead. In fact, even the Captain plugins as well, Captain Play is very, very, very similar to this. Um, but for me, I don't know, just I like the interface and some of the features are really cool. And the fact that it's just very quick and easy to get to use. And yeah, it, for me, it just kind of works. I use it when I'm whenever I'm starting a brand new track or really definitely when I'm doing a remix because I already know the key that I'm working in. So I can really just jump into this and start throwing some ideas around very, very quickly. So I definitely recommend, you know, giving it a try. There's actually a deal on at the moment. If you head over to Plugin Boutique, uh, for launch price of this, I think they've actually got a discount on at the moment. Even on the Audio Modern website as well, there's a discount on there. I think they're both exactly the same. I'll put a link in the description below. But yeah, I definitely recommend trying it out because if you like Riffer or if you like any of the other um, Audio Modern plugins, then I think you're really going to love this because I think it's, yeah, it's really cool. <laughs>